password for most, if not all, online activities. Almost like having one key for all doors, which is practical until someone else gets hold of the key. And don't get me wrong, I like having just one password. It's simple, because who can remember 10 different hard to crack combinations? But what if someone actually did want to get access to your mail account? Here's an example of how that is done. First of all, finding your actual mail address isn't exactly rocket science. Then it takes about five minutes of online search to find out about your hobbies. For instance, where you work out. After that, a simple phone call is all it takes to get hold of your password. The caller pretends to be you and says he's forgotten his password to the gym's online booking system. A service-minded receptionist who wants to help gives out your password to the caller. If it's the same password you normally use online, it means that the caller now has access to most of your online accounts. Now believe it or not, but that's how most passwords are revealed, through a simple phone call. A good example to prevent this from happening is to use something called one-time passwords. Let's say you want to log on to your mail account. As always, you type in your username and password. But instead of logging on, you'll be prompted to enter a one-time password. A password that will be delivered by text message to your phone. Type it in, and that's it. With this solution, you can continue to use the same password you like so much. You just combine it with a one-time password solution. You can also use a mobile app password generator or hardware token. With solutions like these, you can rest assured knowing that all your online information and everything that comes with it is safe. So what does privacy mean? Well, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's yours. Check out Nordic Edge One-Time Password Server. So what do you get? Now, this is something very important. As opposed to admit it, this is also very important too. Okay, what does privacy mean? Do you know that identity theft? Okay. What does privacy mean based on this sub video? Let us have a um, five to ten minutes discussions on that. Let me set up a discussion for you. Okay. Please get online and get ready for your responses. Make sure you get to the night first. It's okay, you can talk loudly. It's your time. Here we go. Um, what does privacy mean? Can you manage to find some information to 
to act in the support of your arguments or your information. So here we go. Let's wait. And I'm going to get ready the microphone for those of you. What does privacy mean? It's a very interesting example, right? They give you some ideas on how can they find something in your Google Mails, and how can they find something through a phone call to you, through your Facebook account, or anywhere you're going to leak some of your private information. What does privacy mean to you? Okay? Feel free to talk to the neighbor next to you, or your learning partner, and to discover some information that will be of uh, interest to the whole class. Let's give you some hit time to the three minutes time first in discovering something. And then we get to this. Of course, it has something to do with uh, right. identity threat. And actually today, there is something very interesting which I'm going to show you after this particular video. Privacy. What if you lose your privacy? What's in danger? That's a three minutes and eleven seconds video, but it contains quite a lot of information. I appreciate all of you are working hard with your mobile devices to make sure you can get online now. Hmm. Thank you very much for your hard work. Now remember, you do not need to type something long, and what you need to do is just to give you a chance to respond to this. You might be thinking of something when we are talking about the issues of privacy, right? And sometimes, if they speak too fast, because these videos are recorded by native speakers in English, be sure to watch them again after class, because that is the focus of the discussion. Okay? And remember, as of last time, uh, we watched a very interesting video called Future Technology. Okay? In the Future Technology video, how can you connect it with the themes of this particular privacy issues? You should have some ideas now. Oh, by the way, I forgot to ask you, have you finished watching that documentary, Virtual Technology at Home? Sounds interesting, right? Have you ever thought about the possibilities that you shed some of your personal responsibility to the robots that's going to be at your home. And the robot take up some of the private innovations you have. And the robot can do something on behalf of you because the robot has all the private innovations you dedicate to them. Aha. And actually today, we have we want to enforce your understanding of the idea of social engineering. So, let's, yes, let's see. I think a lot of you are very close to your comments. Thank you very much. Such an exciting, just. Yeah. You see that? I would say I think private say it's something that only you can access and when someone else can do so, it's not private anymore. Put that into the conditions or the situations which I just mentioned. You now have a robot at home. The robot can do a lot of different things. And the robot can actually help you to do a lot of your, your red tape stuff. And the robot needs some specific information of you. 
like your name, you have like your staff ID or your student ID, like a specific password on a particular account. Okay, then you're giving the robot the private information, but when the robot connects to the whole world to do something, he or she is just a machine or a computer. What if some virus get into the robot and your personal information is stolen from them? Aha. So let's take a look at the second response. I think privacy is your secret that you do not want others to know. It's not only means your personal information, but also your situations or something's happened in your life. Um, one example is your medical record. Our medical records. So it's very sensitive when the government say that each one of us is going to be given um, a specific government account in which our medical history will be stored. And do you see that today in Macau we do have a new type of ID card? The new type of ID card actually can store a lot more information there, including your blood type, any other particular disease you have. This part of your medical record. A lot of people say, no, don't do that. Because you can easily read it. Okay. Something that I don't want anybody else to see, such as some photos or video. Very good. Okay. So you're talking about examples of how you're going to protect the private privacy of your own life. I think it means something that can only be accessible to myself or to a very important and close delicate of yourself. Uh, each one of us will come to a situation in which we really cannot do all the things we're supposed to do. If you were a manager particular, particularly, you need to delegate duties to different people to carry things on for you. And when you delegate duty, uh, the duties to different people to get them finished, you need to give them a proper dose of private information to operate that section. Uh, that will be an interesting thing. So we need policies of information security. It can be anything that I would never let someone else know about it. It's also part of my personal belongings. Thank you very much for Kira for giving something like this. Now let me try to give you, uh, let's see, yeah, let me use this as an example. Oh yes, it's for it right here. Let's see this. Okay, it's about 10 minutes. There's one thing we all have that no one else does, and it's undoubtedly the most valuable thing you own, your identity. Lose it to a thief and you'll quickly realise it's worth more than you think. And it's a crime striking more of us, at least a thousand people last year. Thieves stealing names, bank details, online lives, profiting from the very essence of who you are. Ask John Cilio, a leading American authority on identity theft. I'm incredibly concerned, and I guess that's part of what I'm doing in New Zealand, is I want you to be able to see the mistakes that I've made. Ah, cool. Cell phone, that's what I go for first. Really? Why? I'll tell you that in a minute. His advice is more than just theoretical. Silio gives me a very practical tutorial on how vulnerable I am, how vulnerable we all are, to identity thieves. You've got a food town card, you know, I can get some information from them, an AA card. Um, driver's license, definitely going to need that later. Um, we'll see later on just how easily he could work it if he wanted to rip me off. He knows how because he's been on the other side having his identity stolen twice, victim of the global underground industry which is flourishing on the internet. Through dodgy online forums like these, his details ended up in the hands of a woman who racked up $240,000 worth of debt in his good name. The whole experience led him to throw in IT and make the study of identity fraud a career. Is now in Dunedin to write his third book on the subject. Essentially, I spent two years fighting to stay out of jail. Uh, but what really impacts you is the emotional side of it. For me, it was, you know, I spent two years 
not home, not present for my family, not tending to my business, which eventually died. Um, and that's, you know, identity is not just about numbers. It's about who we are, and it can, it can completely redefine who you are. Identity theft is fast becoming the crime of our times. They say an identity is stolen online, worldwide, once every three seconds. In the age of social networking, we've made it so much easier for the criminal than ever before. So I just went through to see... John Cilio shows us just how much information we readily release about ourselves and how easy it is for someone to exploit it. He goes onto Facebook and picks out a New Zealand student at random, one who's left far too much of her sight unprotected. We know she's a female, we know her full name, we know her parents' names and their profile. Yeah. We know that she's single. Um, Which will be interesting to some people looking at her site. Yeah, unfortunately, to people with bad intentions. You know. And here's where what he calls social engineering comes in. Fraudsters or con artists, stalkers even, who want to target you, invest time getting to know who you are, what makes you tick? I can get a sense of, okay, I know who her idol is, I know the way that she speaks to her friends, and when I write and try and friend her, I'm going to use the same language. I'm going to use her friends' names, they're all listed over here, I'm going to say I'm a friend of, you know, Lisa's, yeah. and I'm going to speak in the same language, and I'm going to refer to a common event that's on her update page, her, her wall. So we decided to think like a criminal. Remember, we don't know Grace, we've never met her, but we wondered, how close can we get to her using only the information she puts on Facebook? Like so many of the 400 million Facebook users, Grace posts frequently and openly about herself, what she thinks, where and what she studies her favourite places to drink, what she likes to drink, where she works part-time, and sometimes even the days and hours she's working. If someone wanted to find her, she's made it incredibly easy for them. And so it proves. We spot her on our first attempt to find her in person. Here she is at work, on the night, and in the restaurant she said she would be on her Facebook profile. Time for us to meet her. You're Grace, right? Yeah. You're a journalism student, yeah? And it's so nice to finally meet you, because I feel like I know so much about you. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. That kind of sounds a little bit weird, doesn't it? Yeah. Because I've been um, reading your Facebook page a little bit lately. We explained we're not actual stalkers. There is a valid reason for our interest. It's about um, proving a point, I suppose, to the public about the idea of privacy. Yeah, what do you reckon? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's crazy, I know. But you don't need to be a Facebook or Twitter user to be a target. John Cilio says we carry around so much information, happily divulging it to the point we might as well have it on public display. It's a potential jackpot for criminals. We know there's no specific charge for identity theft, only for the crimes it leads to. So releasing even the most fundamental personal information can leave you exposed. Which is why John Cilio pretty much never tells anyone anything. What is your date of birth? I don't share that. What about your children? What information do you feel protective about with them? I rarely give out even their ages, not necessarily because I'm concerned about that specifically, but because it sends a message of, have you ever thought about, do you give your kids information away? Birth dates? No way. The, the amount I could do with a birth date and that child's name and knowing where they're born, I could cultivate their credit line and utilize that credit line for years and they'd never know it because they don't go for credit until they're 16 or 18 and they're getting their first apartment. And when they do? There's nothing there. They have nothing. It can, of course, be so much simpler. Remember Cilio has been rifling through my bag? Without even necessarily stealing it, he already has enough information to begin manipulating me. First up, he got my number off my phone. He says he'd ring, pretending to be from the bank, telling me my account's being used suspiciously. 
but reassuring me they'll make it safe. I say, excellent, there's no problem, we're going to help you shut it down. Here's additional information I've got on you. The only thing I need to shut it down is I need to verify your full name and your PIN number. That way we can shut it down before there's any liability on your part. But I think that I know enough about this kind of thing to not reveal my PIN number. Right. And we, we all think that. And believe it or not, more than 90% of people who think that they would not give that information away when they're in the heat of the moment and they're, they're being socially engineered, they give it away like that. Because you've said the right things to make me feel like I trust you. Exactly. You were official enough for me and to I've got, I can build up more trust. I know more about you than the bank, than your specific bank does. Because you've seen what I'm Because like. I've seen everything in your bank. Yeah. So I can, you know, I can really work this situation. Is this a typical woman's handbag, or am I carrying around way too much information about myself? Y yes and yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is typical. Uh, I think the average woman carries, you know, 20 to 30 pieces of identity, and yes, you should be carrying around far less. What you if he'd taken the easy route and just stolen my wallet, he'd simply go online and max out my credit. Surely he couldn't get away with just going into a shop and buying something with my credit card. Or could he? How you doing? Good. I need a um, moderate range price Pinot Noir, a Tago. He has the con man's gift of the gab. He's relaxed and chatty. The retailer is full of ease. Your girlfriend's got a It's full of Yeah. <laughs> okay. It can't possibly be that simple. Forging my signature, even though the shop assistant knew it wasn't his card. So you have a bottle of wine? I do. How did you pay for it? Yours. My credit card. Your credit card. That is yeah. astonishing. So first shop we try. Yeah. Amazing. First one. Yeah. You see the tricks. If he ever wanted to switch sides, he could probably make a killing. Instead, the hunted has now become the hunter sussing out the psyche of identity thieves so he can warn the rest of us, make us a little more savvy to how we too can fall prey. What do you think? To see the illustrations of this kind of techniques. So it's very scary sometimes. Uh, particularly when you went to uh, Bombay, Zhuhai, when you carry 10 pieces of the very important private information on your pocket, the purse, when your purse was big pocket, and you lost all of these, that means they got all the private information of you, and they can use them to do whatever they want, because they have the credit card, they have the security code, they have your ID card, they have your uh, return permit, and they might have your student card number, and and they can actually get access to many different things in your personal life. Okay, what is meant by privacy? What is meant by social engineering? Okay, so today, uh, it's a very quick, quick lesson on this. And I just want to repeat one more time. Uh, in today's class, we start up with IBL, and then I would like to characterize the learning of IBL with a very simple method that we have been using over the past several years, it's called OIA. So in the process of your starting your discussions with your learning partner next week, we would like to make sure that each one of you is going to engage your learning partner with the specific topic of interest per week through the OIA process. I will jump in to remind you in case you're not following this pattern, because I want each one of you to learn the pattern and then there's develop your thinking like this, all right? So that was very important. All right, allow me to take attendance first, and then I will have uh, one to three, one to two comments to make um, based on the feedback that I received uh, from you so far. Uh, that's very challenging indeed. Um, let's see, let me go to do the attendance record for today. Johnson, thank you. Uh, Site Zero, thank you. And then is Austin, thank you. And then Kai Shen, Kai Shen, 
passion you're still not yet, but okay. Edward, thank you. And then is German. German is not here today, okay. Karina, Karina, thank you. And then Venus, thank you. And then uh, Jing Lung, Jing Lung, thank you. Uh, Abby, she's Jing Lung. She's, uh, no, she's, uh, Abby, okay, thank you. Uh, Dorothy, Dorothy, thank you. And then Expensive, thank you. Kira, thank you. Uh, Sam, thank you, thank you, Sam. And then Franklin, thank you. And then Ian, Ian, Ian is not here today, okay, all right. Julia, thank you. And then Benjamin, thank you. Kiwi, thank you. Sophie, Sophie, thank you. Thank you, Sophie. And then Maggie, thank you. And then me, Nia, G, Boy, Oscar, thank you. Okay, Billy, thank you. And then Sunny, thank you. So let's say the first page. The second page, I guess. So, Mabel, thank you. Spanny, thank you. Kelly, Kelly, thank you. All right, Iris, thank you. And now, Iris, thank you. Okay, Jackie, Jackie, thank you. And then, Joan, thank you, Joan, over there. Yeah, that's I know you. <laughs> Joe, thank you. And then Ivaldo, thank you. And then Kilian, thank you. Yes. And then Sophie, another Sophie. Sophie, yeah, it's not here yet. All right, thank you very much. Now, you see, I start asking you questions uh, towards the end of every week about areas of our discussion that's not that does not seem to be clear enough for you so that you may want to raise the questions to me or you come to my office for uh, further understanding so um, i would like to encourage you to make the best use of the hotline system that i have in store a week here okay starting from week number one you see the hotline system uh this is a private channel uh, i think you better give me uh anything if you believe it's private enough that you do not want to share anybody about your understanding of the course you want to know anything make the best use of the hotline and the second thing i would like you to do is uh, if you have not done this we do have a first bit of class questionnaire we set up for um each one of you to uh, give some feedback on the first bit of class i check it only less than 10 of you have done this that means uh, a lot of you I should remind you that please do it before the end of today, okay? So that I could take a good look at your feedback and then adjust our week number three accordingly. Normally, I would do this every two to three weeks to make sure that everyone is on the same page, okay? It's my responsibility to ask you for feedback. And I hope you will collaborate with me. If you do feel anything that is not going in your directions, you want to go in a particular direction, um, express your concern in the feedback also through the hotline i could take into account your concern okay but if you do not let me know i would not be able to do anything to help you okay so make sure you come to this questionnaire and get it done before the end of today all right so based on the themes of our discussions okay the first word what is information security and what is information privacy I believe up to this point, after four classes and two weeks, we should have finished this job on introductions. And regarding the introductions of the method of inquiry-based learning, I think I've done only 50% of the job. I will continue to help you understand a little bit more uh, in our next week, okay, since you now have a learning partner. Oh yes, you need to name your learning partner by the end of today, okay? Uh, in your documents, Q&A hotline for week number two. Each one of you now have your personal channels, okay? For me, I'm just checking each one of you and go to your name and then I see you got me your learning partner, okay? So each one of you has already have a private channel to talk with me. 
So before the end of today, use this channel, click into the link, and tell me my learning purpose information, name, student ID. Now, make sure each one of you in your pair has to do the same thing. Do not say, oh, my partner has done this for me. No, you have to do it for your partner, and your partner has to do it for you in his or her own private channels, okay? This is very important. And the third thing is, uh, this week, the theme of this week is supposed to be um, introductions to information technologies and learning and knowledge or something. Well, overall, I used the documentary, Future Technologies, to help you understand a little bit more impacts there, but um, my recommendation is you come back here, okay, you can see that uh, I have given you three specific documentary here, Growing Up Online, Digital Nations, and Generation Like. Now spend some time this weekend, uh, watch at least one of this, I would recommend Digital Nations, okay, if you are stimulated, continue to finish watching Generation Like. It's a very interesting uh, documentaries, uh, which is about persons like you, okay, in the college, before you get into college, after you finish college. So it should be very interesting to give you a picture of what it's like to learn information technology in today's knowledge society. And of course, if you like something more, you can click on those links. These are very useful links to help you understand the topic for today, or this week. And I will give you the videos for today. Uh, unfortunately, I discovered there's a little bit of the technical problem now. I'm still doing the recording. Uh, but anyway, I'll give you all the videos I captured today here. But for the video, last lecture is already here, so you can review them here, all right? So my job here is I'm going to stop right here today. And um, I hope to hear the feedback first through the first week of class questionnaire, second through the hotline and if you have any other question make sure remember my office hour Monday 5 to 6 30 Wednesday 12 noon to 1 30 in my office okay E11 4087 okay have a nice weekend all right thank you very much